If you would, you can write down comments and questions about what you heard in this message, maybe what you missed in this message that you expected to hear. And I will address all of those at coffee and word reflection on Wednesday at 11. We'll collect those at the end of the service. As we continue this message series called Great Expectations, today we look at John the Baptist. We're going to talk about expectations, and we have been. And I came to realize that we all have them. We all have certain expectations depending on where we are in life. Maybe you start a new position, a new job. Maybe you're starting a new grade. Or when you move to a new home or a location, you all have expectations. Expectations about a new job. That you'll be qualified for that job. That you will enjoy that job and that you will be good and successful at it. Expectations of a new grade level. That you will learn something. You'll get good grades and that you will graduate to the next level at the end of the school year. Expectations about a move. That you will make new friends, that you'll enjoy your new home, but you'll also still remain close to your old friends. We all have expectations. No matter who we are and no matter where we are, but I was surprised at the negativity of expectation that I found on the internet. There was a quote that travels around the internet every now and then that says, expectation is the root of all heartache. And I saw that many times when I did the, the Google search on it usually in a blog or essay post about unmet expectations in a relationship or in a love affair. You'll also usually see it attributed to William Shakespeare. But if you go looking through Shakespeare's sonnets and plays for where that quote is used, you're going to be disappointed. It turns out Shakespeare didn't write it. I don't know why it's attributed to him, but he did not write it. And I dug a little bit deeper into expectations, and I found one dictionary's definition of expectation. It says that the word means to consider something or someone as probable or certain. Well, which is it? Probable or certain? Because it can't be both. You can't be probably certain about things. I found it helpful then to get to the root of the word expectation. Its origin is in the Latin word expectationem, which means to wait, an awaiting, like a dog waiting for his master to come home. This would certainly describe the great expectation person for today, John the Baptist. John the Baptist was certainly expected. His parents as it tells us in Luke 1, 13, we're praying for a child from, the first time, from, their, from day one of their marriage, Zechariah and Elizabeth, praying that God would give them a child. But now they're in their 80s. And an angel shows up and tells Zechariah, your prayers have been answered. And I can imagine that Zechariah says, what prayer? I stopped praying for that long ago. And the angel comes in, oh Yeah. Your words were heard, but now you're going to lose your words because you don't believe what I'm telling you. Your wife is going to have a child. At long last, their prayers will be answered. They should have had that great expectation that God would ex ex definitely bring what they expected. So John the Baptist was expected to a certain extent. He was also expecting. He was expecting the Messiah. Somehow, some way, we know from Scripture that the Holy Spirit revealed it to him, that the Messiah was going to come in his lifetime. Many people were expecting the Messiah, and now John the Baptist knows it's time. We need to get ready. The long-expected Messiah is coming. And so his calling and his proclamation, his words, were planned accordingly, inspired accordingly. 
John the Baptist proclaimed a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, doing this in the wilderness surrounding Judea, around the Jordan River, and for a long time, because he was gathering disciples for himself, he was at this for a while, and people were starting to follow him and were learning from him. Among those disciples were three men, Andrew, James, and John. And then when John baptizes Jesus and points him out as, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, his disciples start to follow then Jesus. So what did John expect after that? After all, it seems like his mission is over. It's all done. I can retire now. The Messiah is here. His disciples are following Jesus now, and I can go away. What else was there to do? But that's not what John did. John apparently continued to preach fire and brimstone, pointing out sin and sinners. That is, until he called out Herod Antipas for his immorality. John was arrested. John was imprisoned. And it seems that while Herod didn't really care what people were saying about him, especially John, Herod's wife had a problem with him. She was embarrassed that the truth of their relationship was being told so forcefully. The truth that she divorced Herod's brother to marry Herod while John was in prison for this crime he sent what disciples he had left to Jesus one last time are you the one we were expecting or should we look for someone else and soon after Herod had John executed and all of John's expectations came to an end but before John was killed Jesus sent word to confirm that indeed he was the Messiah everyone was expecting. Jesus affirmed that John's expectations were not only met, they were far exceeded in Jesus. Jesus was the king from the royal line of David promised so long ago. Jesus is the Savior promised even longer ago to Adam and Eve that everyone was looking for. He brought the word of God as the prophet Isaiah foretold and he brought God's salvation through his shed blood on the cross and Jesus brought an end to death by rising from the dead on Easter morning. You see, that's what Jesus does. He meets and far exceeds all our expectations. So, what are your expectations? You who are called specifically to proclaim the gospel, that Jesus is Lord and Savior of all. What are your expectations as a follower of Jesus? What are your expectations, you who are a member of Jesus' bride, the church, and our little corner of it, St. Matthew Lutheran? I encourage you to be a voice of expectations to the world. Tell the world that the Lord is going to do something unexpected. Because our world, and many churches sadly, do not expect God's grace in baptism. Few people accept the forgiveness of sins in the Lord's Supper. People outside Christ certainly do not expect the fellowship that we get that is ours through our baptism into Christ's death and resurrection. Even we who are new creatures in Christ do not always expect the abundance of God's gifts to his congregation. So remember this, expect it. Grace is first and foremost the essential spiritual gift. Peace is the expectation of God's gift of grace indwelling in us. And our good Lord establishes peace by declaration just as God the Father created the universe by declaration. We have the peace of quiet assurance that our Lord cares for us in all things and situations. We are enriched by gifts of knowledge and speaking, and we are called by God to be a voice of expectation in this world, Jesus' voice in this world. So we need to tell them that the Lord is going to do something unexpected. The Lord who has established the pattern of unexpected goodness to us will make his and our joy complete. 
The Holy Spirit will continue to gift our congregation. The Lord will keep us strong in the faith. And Jesus will do the unexpected when he returns in the same manner that he ascended. That's our expectations as Christians. That's our expectations as followers of Jesus. That God is going to do something that actually surpasses all expectations. And I pray that you will be as comforted as John the Baptist was facing execution that his expectations were met by Jesus. I pray you will be comforted knowing that and that you will also be a voice of expectation to the world. Amen.